Hey guys, what's up? Derek here from Bomb Socks with more Bomb Bites, where we feast upon the words of Christ one bite at a time. So as I was going through Luke chapter 2, there is a unique set of verses here, because as you're reading through the whole growing up of Jesus Christ, we know about him when he was a baby. We know a little bit about him when he was a young child, and then in a lot of the Gospels, all of a sudden it's like, and all of a sudden Jesus is baptized. We're jumping into his about age 30 or so. Wouldn't it be nice to be able to know Jesus a little bit as a teenager? Okay, as, as I've taught this to seminary students, it's like, wouldn't you love to know what Jesus was like as a teenager? And most are like, oh, absolutely. We do not know a lot about him as a teenager. We do have, however, 12 verses in the book of Luke chapter 2, which give us some great insight to Jesus as a teenager, particularly when he was 12 years old. So as he was getting into that coming of age into his teenage years, you go to verse number 40, it says the child grew, he waxed strong in spirit, filled with wisdom, and the grace of God was upon him. We will talk more about that tomorrow. Now his parents went to Jerusalem every year at the feast of the Passover. When he was 12 years old, they went up to Jerusalem after the custom of the feast. And when they had fulfilled the days, as they returned, the child Jesus tarried behind in Jerusalem, and Joseph and his mother knew not of it. This is every parent's nightmare because you don't want to lose your kid in such a big atmosphere there. Granted, your kid is also the savior of all mankind. You do not want to lose Jesus in your life, right? Verse 44, but they, supposing him to have been in their company, went a day's journey. It was a day-long journey. And they sought him among their kinsfolk and their acquaintance. They're looking around like, where's Jesus? I can only imagine the stress and the pressure they felt. Verse 45, when they found him not, they turned back again to Jerusalem seeking him. So there's another day going back. This is two days there without Jesus. It came to pass that after three days... Three days. I don't know if that's three days additional to that or just a three days total. Doesn't really matter. They lost Jesus and that's scary. They found him in the temple, which again, great principle there for all of us. Sitting in the midst of the doctors, both hearing them and asking them questions. Thank goodness for the Joseph Smith translation, which says they were hearing him and asking him questions. Here's these individuals, these smart guys looking at Jesus saying, oh, please teach us. And all that heard him were astonished at his understanding and his answers. And when they saw him, now here's when his parents see him, they were amazed. And his mother said unto him, son, why hast thou thus dealt with us? Meaning, where were you? Why did you why did you do this to us? Behold, thy father and I have sought thee sorrowing. Verse 49 is a great verse. And he said unto them, How is it that ye sought me? Wist ye not, or know ye not, that I must be about my father's business? And Joseph's over here going, I, I'm right here, okay? They understood not the saying which he spake unto them. Now here is a teenager, or at least a 12-year-old, who is misunderstood by his parents. You tell me that that is not relevant to our day, right? You've got this teenager misunderstood. That's one of the most common things that cause friction between parents and children is misunderstandings between each other. Now, I love what it teaches in verse 51 because this gives you a little bit into the character of what Jesus Christ was like as a 12 and 13 year old there. And he went down with them and came to Nazareth and was subject unto them. But his mother kept all these sayings in her heart. So here is a teenager who is misunderstood by his parents. And what happens? he still goes and he is subject unto them. And he recognizes, yeah, maybe they don't fully get this, so I'm gonna still do what I'm supposed to do as a child. So if you're a teenager watching this, sometimes there is great value in just being obedient to what your parents have asked you to do, even though you may not understand and they might not get it, but there's still some power in that. I, I love what it says in the Come Follow Me with this, how even as a youth, Jesus was focused on doing his father's will. He understood his father's business. Even when his parents didn't fully understand, and I don't know how much Mary and Joseph understood about the divinity of Jesus Christ. We do know that they knew who he was, but still in raising a child, there's some difficulties there and you don't always understand that. As a young man, the Savior taught the gospel so powerfully that even the teachers in the temple were astonished at his understanding and answers. What do you learn from these verses about the Savior as a young man? How are young people you know trying to be about their father's business? And I could go on for days about that, having spent a lot of time in the seminary classroom seeing teenagers who are 
very, very dedicated and devout and righteous in going about the will of God and doing what he wants them to do? How have youth and children helped you gain a deeper understanding of the gospel? What else do you learn from the example of Jesus' childhood? It also gives you the Joseph Smith translation, which adds another little dimension to Jesus. As you look at the Joseph Smith translation from Matthew 3, 24 to 26, it says, And it came to pass that Jesus grew up with his brethren, waxed strong, so he had family there. We do know that Mary and Joseph had other children along with Jesus as well. And he waited upon the Lord for the time of his ministry to come. Here's a patient kid who is probably patient with himself and patient with his parents. And he served under his father and he spake not as other men, neither could he be taught for he needed not that any man should teach him. And after many years, the hour of his ministry drew nigh. So it shows you the patience and dedication of Jesus Christ, knowing what he was to do, but still understanding that there are some things that he needed to do to be patient going through that process. And so I think there's a cool little lesson there for the relationship of parents and children in being patient with one another and giving each other a lot of grace as you're going through that experience, which actually ties in to where we are going with tomorrow's episode. Thanks for watching. Thanks for subscribing. Thanks for sharing these messages. So grateful as always that you do that. Please check out our amazingly comfortable gospel themed socks at bombsocks.com. And you guys have a great day. We'll see you tomorrow. Godspeed. Bye-bye.